overcounting. There are two types of overcounting. There's like you overcount multiplicatively in the product rule, you overcount additively in the sum rule. We'll do the sum rule first because it's easier. A sum rule overcount. Here's the idea. If I talk about unions, I'll just simply go to the Venn diagram. Here's A, here's B. I've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Here's A, here's B. Get there. There we go. And I ask, what is the cardinality of A union B? But what I notice is that it has things in the intersection. If I would leave the normal sum rule, the sum rule says this is the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B, right? I'm going to leave off a little, leave yourself a little bit on the right. What is the cardinality of A? How many dots are inside the A circle? Five. How many dots are inside the B circle? If I just simply add those two together, which is 13, how many dots do you see? I only see 11. So what happened? Right, when I counted this A, these two were counted. They've been counted once, right? But when I count it in B, I count them again. So I've counted them twice. So here's my question. If you counted those two once and then you counted them again on your next sum, how would I get rid of them? I would have to subtract. Do I subtract them or I just, do I subtract one of the overcounts? I would subtract it, the two, one time. So basically what I would do is take away the counting of them in the B as I've counted them up. So a sum rule overcount says simply take away the intersection and we get the appropriate number. All right, uh, if I only have two sets, what we're looking at here is a sum rule over count, what did we do? We used what property? What mathematical property? Subtraction. So what probably should we call this rule? The subtraction rule. It also is not called the inclusion-exclusion principle. The inclusion-exclusion principle is probably more useful because when we start to do things that are a little more complicated, but in the end, the subtraction rule, it's also called the inclusion-exclusion principle. Really just simply says, as I go through this, if I have overlap, now if I look at this just a straightforward one, the subtraction rule is the sum rule. You can always use the subtraction rule, right? Because what happens if your intersection is empty? What's the cardinality of it? Zero. It's zero, so you would be subtracting zero, so you wouldn't even need it. So you could actually have just said this is the advanced sum rule if you wanted to call it that. Here comes the awkward part. What happens if I go to three sets? So what's the cardinality of A, union B, union C? Well, normally we would say this is A plus B plus C, but I only can do this if they are empty. So there's my A, there's my B, there's my C. A, B, C. But A, B, C divides up the entire place into eight regions the outside in A, which is not in B and not in C, in B, which is not in A and not in C, in C, which is not in A and not in C, the part that's in B and in A yet not C, the parts in A and C but not B, the parts in B and C that are not A, and then the parts that's on all three. Right? We have all those eight possibilities. It's like, ugh. Now, if I look at this, if I just simply add them all up, <coughs> this region this region and this region have been counted by A. When I count B, this region and then this region and this region have been counted by B. So those two dot, two circles have been counted what? Twice. If I count C, this region is counted, this region is counted, and the middle region is counted again.
So this part's been counted twice, this part's been counted twice, this part's been counted twice, that part's been counted three times. All right, so how do I get rid of the overcounts? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the part that is in A and B. I shall take away the part that is in A and C. And I shall take away the part that is in B and C. All right, if I take away the part that is in A and B, that's these two regions up right here, right? Those two regions. If I take away once, then one of those overcounts is gone, and one of those over oops, too far, and one of those overcounts is gone. So this part's safe; it's been counted once, but everybody below has been counted twice. But if I take away the A and C intersection, that means I take away that overcount and that overcount. Now these three are fine; they've all been counted once. But if I take away the B and C, that's been gone, and he's gone completely. This guy right there. I haven't even counted the middle at all, because I've taken away too much, which means I need to do what? Put it back. And now it's back, and everybody's been counted once. How does the inclusion-exclusion principle, the subtraction rule, work? And this is where the words inclusion-exclusion works well. How does it work when we have lots of sets? You add up all the singletons. You subtract all the duals. You add up all the triples. You subtract all the quads. Then you, it starts flipping back and forth. And so how do I know the duals and the triples and the quads? Well, that's where a membership table helps you, right? You just, if you generate all the one-zero combinations, Everybody who has only one row in it is a singleton. Everybody has two ones is a dual. Everybody has triples, three, right? So the idea of the inclusion-exclusion principle is this alternating process. You would say, what is the cardinality of A1 union, A2 union, et cetera, up to AN? What do we do? We add all the singletons, A1 plus A2 plus up to AN. We then subtract all the duals. That's A1 intersect A2. That is subtract A1 intersect A3. Subtract dot dot dot. Subtract the last one would be A n minus 1 intersect A n. We do all those subtractions. Then we add the triples. A1 intersect A2 intersect A3. Add, keep on going until we get to a n minus 2, intersect a n minus 1, intersect a n. Those are all the triples. And we subtract all the quads. And we add all the five. I suppose these are four tuples. Those are all the four tuples. That's all the five tuples, etc. Go until you run out. Until at the end, you'll have a plus or a minus depending on the order, whoever's left. So if we continue this process, we would end up with a dot, dot, dot. You'll either get a plus or a minus of what is A1 intersect A2 intersect everybody to AN. And it depends on, you just keep going and however the plus or minus end up, that's how it works. This is the advanced inclusion exclusion principle. How does this work? Well, if all of these are disjoint, what happens to all of the intersections? They're all zero. I don't have to worry about it. It's only when these things are disjoint. So this is still the sum rule, but it's the sum rule with, wait a second, are these disjoint? Because they're not disjoint, i got to start subtracting and adding because I over-subtracted. So that's what happens. You subtract. Why do I have to add? Because I over-subtracted. Why do I have to subtract again? Because I over-added. It constantly is bouncing back and forth on the overshoot. It's not pretty. That's why these deal with this joint. It's easy. All right. That is what do we do when we do counting of a bunch of ors where we can have possible overlap. Now, what about an overcount on the product rule?
Well, when I overcounted additions, we got rid of the overcount, we called it the what? By subtraction, it was a subtraction rule, right? If we overcount multiplications, how do you get a, get rid of a multiplication? You have to what? You're going to have to divide away. And so this will be called the division rule. The division rule kind of makes your head hurt, oddly enough. Because it, here's the deal. It's easier to come up with an example, especially when you have to do the wording of it. I have five kids and they all race and we give out three medals. Here's my question. How many ways can that possibly happen? All right, how many ways could this possibly happen? Um, all right, I'm going to think about it this way. What are the total races that would exist? What would you do? If I have five kids running, and I just simply, what are all the possibilities? They're going to cross the finish line, right? So what's going to happen? First place or second place or first place and second place right? So they're all running. How many possible kids could cross the line in first? There's five ways to do that. And, well, he's crossed. How many people are still running? Four. So how many, how many possibilities now are there for, to cross the line for second? Four. And how many for third? And how many for fourth? And last person to cross. Now here's my problem. How many am I actually interested in? What did I do? I counted fourth place and I counted fifth place. My problem is fourth place and fifth place are actually the same thing. They're losers. Oh, I love that word, right? And so they don't get anything, right? We could just have simply said, stop the race, go home. These three matter. But I counted them. So what's my problem? I've overcounted, right? What I said was for the total races, what I called fourth and fifth are actually simply they lost. And how many ways can you lose? There were what? Two times one of the lost. So I overcounted multiplicatively. So I've got to get rid of it. So what do I need to do? Divide it out, right? So I had this total race. What is this? That's 20 times 6. That's what, 120? There was 120 races. And I said, no, 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 no. You counted the losers, right? Oh, I overcounted. Oh, darn it. How many, how many ways did the losers arrange themselves? Well, they arrange themselves two ways, either fourth or fifth or fifth or fourth, and I don't care what their order was. Oh, okay, so that means that the real answer is actually 120 divided by 2, which is 60. I had to divide away the fact that I had a multiple version way that was overcounted multiplicatively. It's hard. <laughs> Here's where it's like... It, this is hard to say in general, right? We have to divide, we have the overcount by multiplication, right? It, it's hard to state. So here's the division rule. I'll just copy what they do so we can actually argue out so that you can understand what they're saying. There are n divided by d ways to do a task if it can be done by a procedure that 
that can be carried out in n ways. And sometimes I would rather have used the word, instead of using the word and, I would probably use the word but, because what's the importance of the word but? It's like, it's the word and, but I want you to focus on what I'm about to say. All right? So, and for every way W, and so this is like what we just did, loser, right? It's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I have a label for a particular thing that's occurred. I've lost for every way of whatever label. So this W is actually a label. Right? Our label before was you lost. For every way W, exactly D of the N ways correspond to way W. So like on our previous problem, there are 120 ways to run the race, but there's a specific thing that I'm focusing on, which is losing, right? To lose, there's two ways for this to happen, fourth, fifth, or fifth, fourth. So there's an overcount here, so I need to divide by it. But this is also true if we would look at, for example, the entire thing. Uh, there are 120 races. But if I have 120 races, we have, if we would look at this, it's actually there's first, there's second, there's third, and then there's lose. And if we have five people, and these are the ways. If you get a first, how many ways is it possible for you to get a first? One. I come in first. How many ways are there to come in second? One. There's one way for me to come in second. How many ways for third? One, right? But how many ways to lose? Two. I came in fourth or fifth. And so this actually applies. There's only one way to do this. There's one way to do this. There's one way to do this. There's two ways to do this. So 120 divided by 1 times 1 times 1 times 2 is 60. We could look at it that way. You always ask, how many ways could this possibly happen when I've counted it, but you've counted it multiplicatively? Is everybody okay with how the division rule works? Now let's think of this. Uh, oh, I'm over by two minutes. Darn. So that's actually the entire thing. But So our beginning of basics, these are the most basic rules that we need to understand. The word and, the word or, and did I overcount? If we can get those things, we can begin the process of accounting. Yes, sir. Yep. All right, that's it.